The Superbike Show on Motorsport Radio. Hello and welcome to a very special Saturday night Superbike Show. We are live on Motorsport Radio on, uh, yeah, a first time ever, a Saturday night. Myself, Lester Forbes and Tristan Finocchiaro here telling you about everything that happened in Moto2 and Moto3 testing and why it matters, who performed well and who is looking a bit iffy at this stage before the first round of the Grand Prix next week. Plus, we've got live interviews with uh, former GP rider Simon Buckmaster and team owner, of course, and Luke Hedger, all on the show here. Stay tuned. Join the conversation. Contact the show on Twitter, on Facebook, and on our website, Motorsport Radio. And you can get in touch with us uh, this evening on Saturday night. Let us know that uh, we're all good and uh, sounding good and everything. And, uh, well, even if you're... Um, disagreeing with anything that we've got to say uh, this evening that's allowed as well it is a free country apparently before we all get locked up um before i don't know for inciting violence by saying things like pasta is not a real dinner well that's that's just a complete <laughs> attack on my heritage list <laughs> don't get triggered um, how would you feel if i attack pot noodles what are you saying I, 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 they're, they're, they're <laughs> the same thing Okay, sure. Anyway, uh, so yeah, let us know. Uh, get in touch with us uh, this evening. If you've got any questions whatsoever uh, for Simon Buckmaster or uh, Luke Hedger, who will both be on the show live this evening. Hello to Michael Howarth, who I know is uh, eagerly tuned in. Uh, he will be on the show uh, hopefully next week. Uh, we're going to try and drag him on um, with a, uh, a comedy hook um, just in time for him to spill his guts on his well, his thoughts anyway, at least, uh, about, um, well, everything, really. We've not heard from him for quite a while, and um, it's unlike him to keep his thoughts under his hat for too long. Um, but anyway, so yeah, uh, hello, good evening to Michael Howarth, and also Jay King as well. He couldn't join us because he's delivering uh, Chinese food this evening, I think. I mean, you've got to do something, haven't you, to keep a job. Um, so, uh, yeah, Jay is busy working, and uh, why, Tristan, are we here on a Saturday night? Uh, because I was working all, all through the week, so, um, yeah, you, you guys have kindly moved the show for me. And it's just me and you. Just me and thee uh, for the, uh, mm. the evening until the others turn No up. pressure. And, uh, well, yeah, we've got uh, just already having a... Uh, if, I, if I look a bit distracted, it's, it's not um, that I'm not paying attention to what you're saying, Tristan. It's... Um, Sorry, yeah, no, yeah, no. Uh, I am paying attention. I'm just also <laughs> checking in with uh, people's comments as well um, and seeing what pearls of wisdom people have, um, especially for uh, me uh, as well. So, uh, hello to uh, Kim Hollings as well. Uh, early on the stream, hello, Kim. Good evening, uh, he says. And um, yeah, we're going to, uh, I suppose, big questions this evening. We don't really have any lined up, but um, it's, I mean, we, we've, we've covered quite a lot of things already on the show. Um, we've done a lot of other stuff um, involving BSB. We don't have any sort of major questions. The big MotoGP preview will be next week. Um, but uh, I think staying with BSB, at least, because, uh, well, I'm sure you've already heard by now, earlier in the week, I think on Monday, um, a massive calendar upheaval um a change in the calendar to some dates uh, in bsb was announced and uh well tell us more tristan yeah so they've um i mean a lot of dates have changed a lot of the rounds have, have, have um, moved around um the first round has moved to um to late may which was uh, or sorry it's moved from late may to um to late june so that's um, like a whole month pushback um, so that's even longer we have to wait to to get back on the bike. So it was um, a bit disappointing for me. But the good thing about that, um, and the reason Stuart has done that, um, has been to try and get more spectators and all, trying to um, ensure that when we do go back, we're going to have the, that um, number of spectators that, um, you know, that, that obviously, because obviously BSB is, the big thing with BSB is the spectators. They, they're a big part of the, big part of the paddock, big part of the family. So without without having them there, uh, a BSB round without spectators isn't really a BSB round. Yeah, it was, as you probably felt last year, uh, or maybe not, because you were head down, you know, focusing on your lap times and such, but uh, there were, it, it did feel more like a testing sort of um, 
weekend and and that's yeah, not right sure. really understand and there's no way around it obviously because the msv uh an msvr team did a fantastic job to even get any events on at all last year um sure. but uh, yeah there have been a couple of changes as you say i think i can't remember exactly what changed from the original dates have you got the original dates there I've with you got what, the original dates here in front of me yeah, on my okay. phone um, so yeah, obviously the first round has changed. The second round was going to be Thruxton, fourth uh, or sixth of fourth um, or the sixth of June, um, which obviously I mean they don't even start till uh, the end of June now. So that's going to be obviously you can see on screen. Um, and for those four. listening as well, yeah. Um, yeah, it's round four now, and round two will be um, Knock Hill. Um, it was then um, it was going to be then Snetterton. Now it's Brands GP, like you can see. Um, there's quite a few dates that have um, that have moved around. Most of the ones towards the end of the calendar uh, are pretty similar. Um, but yeah, quite quite a few changes. And obviously that that main change being that it's starting the season is starting later on. Yeah, and a few uh, changes to the testing as well, um, which yes. I believe, do not quote me on this because I'm probably going to be wrong, but I mm -hmm. believe um, some of the testing dates are hopefully going to be available for public viewing. That, uh, possibly. That's I haven't the intention, I think. But um, I mean... I mean, for me, I just want to figure out which which test states I'm able to go to because <laughs> that's something we don't really tend to know until like a week before the test. Um, but yeah, I, I believe so. Yeah, I did hear something about that. Uh, yes. Well, um, uh, again, I don't know because um, I'm not Stuart Higgs and uh, and I've got a terrible short memory. But um, there is only uh, four test um, events. Uh, Silverstone being a two-day test, uh, test two, uh, over a three-day Snetterton weekend. Uh, well, I think some of these are midweek, aren't they? Um, yes. Alton Park on May the 19th, and then Donington on June the 8th. And then just, uh, I think, what, three short weeks later, it's uh, Alton Park for round one. Um, track that you're most looking forward to riding at, where do you think you could go well at on that calendar? Uh, Don I'd have to say Don International. Don International is always a, a good one for me, and I always feel like that's round five. Um, obviously, uh, yes, yeah, round five, yeah. So um, I mean, obviously, the GP circuit is always brilliant because it's the GP circuit, and it's um, you know it's what we see. Um, you know, GPs have been well, superbikes go to, but I sort of feel that the national circuit has more of a flow. It's because it sort of cuts out. The, I feel like the final sector at Donington feels very forced and feels like it's just there well, the for the sake of. The, the two loops, yeah. Okay. The Foggy S's is, is, is lovely, it's beautiful, and I'm actually, um, uh, Junior Super Sport a couple of years back was actually my strongest sector, sector. I think I topped it every session. But um, that final sector, the to Turpins, it, probably a little bit biased because I'm a bit crap at them. I always lose all my time through that final sector. Um, but also, I just feel like it's just a bit forced. I feel like if, when you cut that out and you just have that final chicane at the end, it just flows a lot nicer. I remember, I seem to remember you doing s pretty decent at... Um uh, what was it round? It must have been round one, was it? I think, or whatever round it was when you did pretty okay. I think. I don't know. Uh, was it? Is it uh, what six hundreds or super or juniors? Uh, six hundred. Yeah, last year. Um, yeah, my best result of the year was actually yeah at Donington, um, and that was also partly because a lot of people crashed. But um, I mean, I felt like I rode a good race. Yeah, but you um, but didn't. It, crash. it was helped. I didn't, yeah, that was the main thing. I mean, I think I sort of went into it knowing that a lot of people were going to crash because it was the first round, because obviously the, all the rounds got delayed because of COVID. And I was like, well, we only get one race this weekend. Everyone's going to be desperate to try and prove something and be back in a race. And they haven't raced for so long. So I knew there was going to be a lot of crashes. So my main focus actually was to sort of stay on and just keep just keep going. Um, but I think I rode a good race anyway, but I was definitely helped by a lot, a lot of crashes in that race. Um, also, my only my only win at British level is, um, or at national level is... Um, is it Donington National as well? So so far. So far, yes. Yeah, we'll change that this year. Yeah. Round one, Alton Park. Boom. Uh, yeah. How many races do you actually get? At, uh, have you, do you know yet? Because like, some rounds you got two races, others it was one. And, um, yes. Well, I uh, suppose I we should be grateful for any, really. But Yeah, absolutely. I, I believe Alton's two races for us in, um, in uh, Super Stock 600 or... Um, junior super stock as i should say now um yeah i believe it's it's two races at alton park that's what it was last year um i haven't actually checked because now it's all 
uh, what's the same round round i'm pretty sure it's two races okay um, but i need to check that yeah well i'm sure calendars uh, uh, the uh, schedules for the weekend will be published and uh, a few things yeah and to be honest i mean if we are being honest with ourselves if there's another change let's hope not but if there is we won't be that surprised. Um, it will probably uh, be for the best, I'm guessing. But uh, Stuart Higgs and the team in coordination with, uh, I think, um, I'm, I'm inclined to say that they did it in, in consult consultation with the British Touring Car Championship because they both released a revised calendar at the same time on the Monday morning, I think. so. Yeah, I did, yeah, I did notice that as well. And I mean, just look at the amount of times World Superbike calendar has been changed as well. That oh, seems don't, to change. Don't let me start. Change it's going to be changed again. So, Twice, I'm a, guessing. But it's probably changed while we've been on air. I don't know. I've I, I, I've lost completely lost track <laughs> of it to be honest. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, it's changed so much. Kiko's stopped telling me about the changes because uh, he's <laughs> exasperated. Um, that's uh, our. Kiko works at World Superbikes. If you didn't know, and uh, Kiko, former presenter of the Superbike Show as if you could forget. Um, but anyway, so yeah, revised test dates, um, Silverstone. Are you happy with those test dates for yourself? I mean, you, it's a three-day Snetterton. I don't know what categories are yeah. on at what date, but uh, does that, does that do you, would you feel going to Alton Park feeling prepared, having had that amount of tests? I mean, for us um, support riders, we don't actually know what tests we're at yet, um, or I don't anyway. Um the first, I, what I tend to assume the ones where there's more than one day, then that's the ones that the support classes are at. So look, normally Silverstone, the Silverstone test days, you have one day for supports and then one day for um, super bikes and super sport. Um, and I'm assuming, or I'm hoping, Snetterton will be similar that we'll have the sports will have some sort of test day in there as well. And I'm pretty sure the ones where it's just one day, so like uh, the third test day, um, like May the 8th, May the 19th at Alton Park and June the 8th mm. at um, Donington. I'm pretty sure those would just be the superbike class. Um, but yeah, I mean, any test at this point, I haven't actually ridden a bike since October. So it's literally since Brands Hatch at the last round. Wow. So to get on a bike and even even on a push bike at this rate would be um, around a circuit would be beneficial testing. Mm. Well, um, there you go. You heard it here first. Tristan Finocchiaro uh, racing his push bike. Yeah. With a basket on the front, no doubt. <laughs> Probably be quicker. <laughs> um, but uh, there you go then. So the uh, BSB uh, calendar as of uh, the 20th of March 2021, uh, subject to uh, further change, hopefully not, but um, we wouldn't be surprised. Um, I'm hearing that Assen will be on the calendar next year. Not confirmed, obviously, but that is everybody's intention. Uh, we apparently, well, Stuart himself, I think, said um, that. We really wanted it this year, but there's just a bit too many risks of having it cancelled and too many headaches, etc. So, obviously, it's a bit wise to swerve that one. Um, but Aston, obviously, we need to go back there. And uh, hopefully, we will. So, there you go. I'll, I'll, sure. not, I'll not jinx it anymore. But uh, uh, what uh, particular other circuits are you, um, if you're listening live, are you looking forward to attending? Have you got your ticket um, already? Did you buy your ticket last year? Um, well, um, Tristan, you have news as well uh, regarding tickets because, uh, well, there's some good news for once regarding ticket holders. Yeah, for sure. I mean, if um, you know, if there's any cancelled events last year um, in 2020 that you were um, a ticket holder of, and you still have those um, tickets, or you'd um, you'd paid for those tickets, um, then that respective round um, for 2021, you can then use those tickets for, and um, uh, obviously when you, you've already paid, so those tickets will carry on into 2021. So that's that's yeah. a, that's a pretty cool little. Uh, um, pretty cool little add-on that BSB have done. Um, I'm hoping it, it goes the same for our passes as well, and we don't have to pay entry fees. Uh, mm, maybe not, maybe so. not. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I, I believe, um, I, guess, I, th I think Stuart issued a clarification video, or Bennett's did, um, earlier in the week yes. as well, yeah. saying that, yes, you can either carry over the entire ticket and attend the event, whatever it was, this year, if, it, if you didn't go last year or it was cancelled or whatever. Um, alternatively, you can... Uh, um, uh, get um, a credit on your account on the uh, MSV website or something. Um, but, um, yeah, basically, it's good news for ticket holders. Yay. 
and I don't know any more than that. So um, I'm, I'm already imagining uh, tons of um, questions on the BSB Fans and Support Classes Facebook group. Hello, by the way, if, uh, if you are tuned in to us via that. Uh, I'll get to uh, your comments later. Um, but uh, yeah, on to uh, the next calendar, uh, because uh, also um, we, well, I've been diligently making loads of fancy new graphics today. Um, and, uh, well, MotoGP, it's literally just around the corner, Tristan, next week. And uh, it's at the, uh, the uh, well, a lot of people consider it a boring circuit. But anyway, I won't ask you your opinion yet. Uh, but, yeah, Qatar, literally around the corner. And uh, some, some pretty good, sizable calendar uh, for MotoGP. And uh, I think there's a race every single weekend in October. I think, yeah, looking at that, and, um, yeah, I mean, if you were in the, uh, GP paddock, Tristan, you might still be, mm. um, mm. one day, um, which of those events in MotoGP 21 would you be most looking forward to? Oh, that is, that is a question, that is a question, um, definitely none of the ones in October where they're all back to back and you're flying between countries. Well, um, I mean, Japan, Thailand, Austria, yeah, okay. Mate, mate. I'd have to go, I'd have to go, I'd have to be the stereotypical cliche rider. I'd have to go Mugello just because I haven't done it yet. I mean, there's a few, there's a few on there that I've, that I've done. They were all amazing, don't get me wrong, but obviously I want to try new things. Um, so I think Mugello would be, would be an awesome experience, especially like the atmosphere there and, uh, and the circuit looks amazing as well. And it's, uh, yeah, that that would definitely be one for me. I know it's cliche and probably the answer every rider would give you, but for sure, Magellan. Well, I don't know. I mean, uh, maybe, maybe there's some people want to test out the new gimme ring. Or key, key, can gimme. I'm calling it the gimme yeah, ring. Yeah, I've, I haven't seen much about it, so I couldn't actually tell you. It'd be, it'd be, it'd be cool to see a new, um, a new circuit on the calendar, so it'd be interesting to see. Um, but yeah, I mean... Any circuit at this point, at this point where we are, <laughs> with the amount of track time we're getting at the moment, any circuit will do me. Uh, definitely. Um, yeah, sure. And uh, Britain, uh, Silverstone is August the 29th. Uh, let's keep our fingers crossed for that, um, that it will go ahead. Why wouldn't it? I can't see no particular reason. Don't jinx don't, it. Don't for, jinx it, Lister. Don't, don't jinx it. Don't jinx it at all. Um, but, uh, yeah, uh, so the first round, MotoGP, and we'll get into a big MotoGP preview next week on the show. Uh, hopefully, Michael Howarth will join us for that. You can even join us as well if you tuned in and uh, bring a bag of opinions onto next week's show whenever we do. I don't even know when we're doing a show. I don't know what day of the week. Depends on your work shifts. Tristan, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll figure that out and get that out to the, to the public ASAP. Exactly. Um, but uh, highlight events for me that I'm looking forward to. Um, I am actually looking forward to the first round just to see, because uh, it's, it's, it's the sort of first day at school, isn't it? Mm. Um, after a long time. And we want to see really, well, Marquez probably not going to be riding. Um, but you think? Probably not. I mean... He's had so well, I mean, he's had so long out. I mean, yeah. what's one more round? I mean, why why risk his entire recovery mm. just for? I mean, it, maybe it might work out like that, and he might be impatient. He's done it before, and it's cost him big. Uh, cost yeah, probably biggest mistake of his career. So if he's learned anything, old Marquez, um, he should probably be, do the wise thing: sit out Qatar, uh, let his arm grow back <laughs> mm -hmm. and um <laughs> and yeah um mount a full title charge later in the season um to be honest i can see him missing uh both qatar events yeah. maybe portugal as well uh coming back in uh at Jerez on the 2nd of may which isn't that far away to be honest mm, he, he was just riding at portugal which i found was a really um odd track i think he did a couple of days at barcelona and then a day at um portimao mm. which i thought was really odd of a, to pick that track to come back and, and ride to because it is so physical so demanding probably one of the I hardest mean, tracks it's the hardest track definitely on the calendar probably one of the hardest tracks on a motorcycle worldwide it is extremely tough extremely demanding so i mean he could have done himself quite a bit of damage just just on his outlap around there well I uh, I wish him the best. 
to be honest. Yeah. I, I, I do think the best thing for him, obviously with all my worldly knowledge of winning championships, um, would be to, uh, to skip Qatar entirely, uh, probably give Portugal a swerve, and if his arm is still intact and uh, on his torso, um, come back at uh, Jerez, and you can probably still do a fantastic uh, damaging job in the championship having missed three races. Definitely. Because, well, you don't know what you, the other people are going to do. They might miss a few races as well. You don't know. Um, so there we go. Um, and the season set to end November 14th in, uh, well, surprise, surprise, in Spain, in Valencia. Uh, there's two um, cancelled, what was it, not postponed dates, I think, which haven't yet been allocated a date. They may be reallocated later. But that's the calendars as it stands at the moment, Tristan. Uh, which leads us nicely onto Moto2 and Moto3 testing. Because uh, that's been uh, happening... Um, today? Today, yes. At, uh, yeah, Qatar. And, uh, well, just tell us, uh, tell us the big news then. Yeah, for sure. So, um, I mean, uh, Vierge topped the Moto2 test. Um, so, so, you know, starting with Moto2, he topped that. Um, it was really close as well. All the times were, were, were very, very close. I believe it was um, uh, Aaron Canet was second. Navarro was third. Remy Gardner was there in fourth. Um, Jake Dixon, um, our own Jake Dixon, was fifth. Um, and Marco Bezzecchi in sixth. And all of these riders, the whole top six, were all split. Um, they were all under a second of each other. Um, so Dixon uh, down there in fifth was only um, six tenths of a second, um, or six hundredths of a second rather, um, away from Vieje at the top, which is extremely close. And I'm pretty sure the the top twenty were all split by something like like two. It was two seconds, two point one seconds. It was, um, which I mean we've always seen Moto Two is extremely close, but um, yeah, it's just crazy to see to see those times. It's almost like the new Moto Three, really. Isn't it? it yeah, it, it's, quite, it was but... closer. It was closer in times than the Moto3 um, testing was. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we've uh, just had a quick look at the top nine. For some reason, I've, I've, I've only got space to look at the top nine from Moto2, Moto3. And, uh, yeah, like you say, um, hey, Jake Dixon done pretty well. Uh, fifth place in... This was just Saturday testing, though. I mean, there's another... Uh, I th is it the final day tomorrow? Uh, yes, yeah. It is, okay. So, yeah, another day of testing. Anything could happen, but, uh, I mean, can we, can we read anything into, into these times? I mean, for example, uh, Sam Lowe's uh, ninth on, uh, in, in Moto2 at the end of Saturday uh, testing. Is that even significant? I mean, I don't know. I mean, Lowe's ninth. I mean, obviously, um, position is, is what you're going for. Um, if he wasn't far off, only three tenths on his quickest lap compared to Vieja's quickest lap. Um, but then also one thing you've got to look at is, is consistency and, and how these guys are feeling. Um, you know, big surprise, Alex Lowe's, Alex Lowe's uh, sorry, Sam Lowe's did have a bit of a bit of a crash, um, which can't be something that's going to go in his favour. Hopefully, we won't see that. Um, that Sam Lowe's come back this year that you know that we've seen so many times him putting it on the floor. But at the same time, testing is the time to get these these things out of the way. Um, obviously, you're going to be pushing pushing the limits um, in testing. So whatever That's he was trying there. That's a diplomatic way of saying that he broke your heart last year. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we all we all wanted him to do well, and he to be fair, he did. He was a lot better in terms of staying on two wheels than he has been in the past. Um, but it just seemed like right at the point where everything crunched down, right at the point where mm. all the pressure was on, he just sort of went back to the old Sam Lowe's and, and chucked it down the road. But, I mean, it's easy to say that when someone has one crash, um, you know, it's, it was definitely wasn't as consistent as how, how he was crashing before. Um, so, obviously, I mean, if you have one crash and you're, you're known for crashing, people are going to think, oh, is he going back to his old ways? But then again, I don't think that's you know, all, all riders no. crash, all riders crash. I don't think uh, that. Some more than others. Okay. Mm. He's, he's <laughs> very, very pointed comments. I mean, you've turned into like <laughs> me all of a sudden. I don't know. Um, Moto3, though. Um, well, Mick Fee, uh, fastest on the Saturday. Um, yeah. So uh, let's just call the whole thing off now. And uh, Mick Fee can claim a glorious uh, victory in testing, which means nothing yeah, it was, at all. Yeah, it was right at the end he put that time in. Um, and, you know, uh, in Moto3 terms, blew away the field with um, 
a point three over anyone else uh, with Fodger in third, Mignot, uh, Acosta and, and Salach. Um, so yeah, it's good to see McPhee up there. Um, hopefully it'll be a good year for him. It's going to be his final year in, in Moto3 um, and hopefully we'll see him in Moto2 next year. But um, I mean, hopefully this is McPhee's year. I know we've said that every year, um, but you know, fingers, fingers crossed for the Scott. Yeah, uh, how old is he now? I mean, I, I sometimes, because of the, because I have high hopes for John McPhee every year, like you say, it's, you know, every, every year is going to be his year, it's going to be, you know, and he, he always turns into, yeah, well, we know what happens anyway, but, uh, and, he, and it's, I always end up giving him a bit of criticism at the end of the season, and that sometimes translates to, you know, whoever's on the panel, uh, thinking that I hate John McPhee. I really don't. I mean, I, I want him to do well and represent... Setting that record straight. ...the UK and, and Great Britain. Um, but uh, when he doesn't, then he's very firmly Scottish. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. I um, mean... <laughs> Uh, but yeah, McPhee, um, uh, Fanati, uh, I was just having a look at uh, some, of the, some of the more bigger names. Fanati, I mean, is he even worth paying attention to anymore? He's, he's an incredible rider, don't get me wrong, and the things he does, the lines he takes, the passes he makes are incredible, but he's sort of turned into um, one of those riders that you have no idea what Midfield ride he's going Mary. to turn up. Just yeah, but he'll he'll have one race or one qualifying session where he's incredible at the front, doing incredible things, and then he'll just sort of drop off completely and and be nowhere. And that's not what he used to be like. If you remember, like when he yeah. was with the Sky VR46 team at the front of Moto3, he was strong. And I guess I mean there was probably more motivation there because he was you know young talent climbing up and through. Um, and now everything that's happened to him has happened to him. He's been put back down a class. And I mean, he's probably not quite got that. He's been battered a little bit. Um, and he's just not quite recovering from that. Um, I mean, it was all it was all self-inflicted, don't get me wrong. And, and Yeah, I mean, no his, one... his comeback season, everybody, I think, allowed a bit of um, leeway because he was still, you know, he was like, as you say, he was uh, rising again from the ashes of his... Uh, former you know high flying career sort of thing um but um yeah according to testing times anyway and um and maybe we can't read much into it um not really doing much not really exciting and uh um, well he's pushing on a bit in terms of age my honest brutal opinion is to you know especially when we see names names like this that have been around a while and are sort of taking seats that could be for the next marquez um I think it's time to push them out of the way and, and, and bring riders that are fresh talent that are coming up and through and that, you know, giving these opportunities to um, to the talent that we're going to see coming up and through. And I know that's really harsh, but that is the way the sport is, especially at, at GP level. It needs to be that cutthroat. Um, he's an incredible rider, don't get me wrong, and he does deserve to be there. Um, but I think if we're going to see the progress in the, resort from, in the sport from the youngsters, then we need these kind of riders we need to see out the way. Well, there you go. Um, you heard it here first from Tristan Finocchiaro. Uh, Fanati, right. you, you're gone, basically. Um, oh. Nothing against Fanati at all. He's an incredible rider, but um, that's just my, my, my opinion. <laughs> he's an incredible rider, but... Uh, but but he's, you, he's, he's had his it. chance. He's exactly. had his chance, is what I'm going to say. Okay, fair enough. Um, I don't know, maybe there's space uh, in Moto3 for, uh, I don't know, uh, our next guest uh, who's uh, coming on, um, Mr. Luke Hedger. Uh, Tristan, if you want to, uh, I don't know, just, uh, officially introduce him. A rider that's you know, been around the paddock for a hell of a long time. Uh, a rider that I've seen through the paddock, watching him through GP125, Stock 600, Supersport, um, and now a few years in uh, in Stock 1000, Luke Hedger. Uh, Luke, welcome to the Superbike Show. Oh, hello there, guys. How are we? Yeah, not bad, not bad. Yeah, enjoying lockdown. <laughs> yeah, no, aren't we all, aren't we all? Itching to get out on a bike, I'm assuming. Ah, uh, yeah, definitely. Missing the old burning rubber and going fast. <laughs> yeah, have you been able to, to do much in terms of training and, and, and getting on a bike? In terms of training, uh, like fitness-wise, I've got a personal trainer, so he let me use my his watt bike for the training period. So I've been cycling and stuff like that, but um, like physical-wise, like, like, you know, just like going to the gym and building strength and stuff like that, so that's a bit of a pain in the bum. So you're not able to do it. Um, 
But yeah, it's been good. Like I said, I've been keeping myself fit. It's just obviously not bumming seat time I'm missing, really. Well, it's brilliant to have you on. Um, you know, it was you're very happy to hear when um, when Christian told us you were coming on. I'm very happy to hear that you're coming on. I think the way we're gonna we're gonna I'm gonna start this one is we're gonna just start off with a little bit on your background um, and start literally right at the beginning. Um, okay. So I mean, just as a start for those because obviously you've been you've been around a long time. Um, you're a name that um, that we all know and we've all seen do do extremely well. Um, so how did how did you get started? Where did it all start? Well. Um... It started with my dad. He uh, he's never been a racer. He's been a trap day hero, let's say. <laughs> um, <laughs> I appreciate that comment. Um, <laughs> he uh, he just loved bikes, and um, yeah, basically just said, sat me on a. Let me restart that. He sat my big brother on a Mimoto first, and then I was about four years old, and. Um, I said, I kept going on about my dad, let me go, let me have a go on it, let me have a go on it. He went, no, it's too fast for you, you're, you're going to hurt yourself. And in the end, he obviously got to the end of his tether and went, have a go then. I crashed it, hurt myself, oh, and yeah. I didn't touch a bike for a good, for about four to six years after that, because I was scared to even touch a bike. So my dad bribed me with a quad and went, if you have a go on a bike again, I'll give you a quad. And <laughs> probably the worst mistake of his life because he bought the quad before <laughs> I went on the bike and I loved the bike and then he had to start the quad again. So, yeah, I think I started properly buying a bike when I was about eight years old and it, it wasn't wasn't actually meant to be something serious. I think my dad just wanted me to have a hobby and enjoy being young and just, you know, just enjoy it. So, um, yeah, like every kid in Britain, starts off me motos in the British Championship. I did that. I went on to Metch Kits 50s and built up to 70 cc but me being my height um normally when you do the british championship you move up to like the previous super teams but i couldn't even touch the floor on one i could physically like i tried one i fell off the side of it my brother's brand new pretty rs125 he was not happy about that um so uh, at that time in point they did the joint of metric 80 cc's with the previous super teams there wasn't many of us there was about five of us and then from that, I went on to um, GP125s. I did the Thunder Sport Championship. Um, I won that in my first year. Well, I say I won that. I won the Cup. I was in the Cups. So I won the Cup. And then I went to BSB. I won my first race at BSB straight away. Had a few podiums. Um, then the year after, I won the championship. Moved on to Stocks 6. I won that. And then Super Sport, I had a bit of... Um, success in it, not much. I, I couldn't really put my finger on it why it never gelled. Um, then stopped thousands, so this is why I'm at my point in my career now. Um, yeah, so with JDR for this year in stock thousands, mega little team. Can't wait to actually see the bike and even touch the handlebars because I haven't done that in well months and months and months. Even to sit on the bike, I'm looking forward to. Just doing that and then hope then BSB starts testing in end of April. So, yeah, I'm buzzing to even go out and just spin laps, even if I'm mega slow. I'm just really looking forward to just going out and having fun on a bike again. I mean, the good the good thing about that for um, you know for any individual rider is um, you know and anyone who's who's going to get back onto onto two wheels is we're all in the same boat and every rider has had that um, you know that long bit of time without without getting without having some seat time a mm. few exceptions that have that have been out in Spain but yeah. you know most of us are all pretty much in the same scenario so it'll be interesting to actually see what happens when this season gets going again and everyone's sort of finding their feet right at the beginning. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. It's like a Normally we have a big break anyway because the BSB doesn't start normally until a bit later on anyway. But this feels like a lifetime. I mean, it's 